puppy school tomorrow. Tickle Jack! Tickle Jack! Oh, Mom! Ah! Be Happy December 4th. Thank you for coming back to the Mama and a Man's Vlogmas. Uh, thank you for the well wishes and also the birthday wishes for Elizabeth. Um, it will still be her birthday until we actually get to go out and celebrate it according to her. So you were definitely not too late in giving her birthday wishes. Um, the kids did end up having school today. I woke up about 4.30 and there was a winter weather advisory on my phone and so I was like, oh my goodness, they're going to end up being home again. And as you can see from the video that I'm going to put at the very beginning from last night, I was kind of hoping that they actually would go to school today. Um, <coughs> feeling a little bit better today. However, my cough is worse. My chest doesn't hurt as badly as it did yesterday. My head doesn't feel like it's about to explode, um, but my cough is pretty deep and gross and coughing stuff up. So it's probably actually a more productive and good um, thing, but it's annoying. And so if I start hacking up along them, I have to pause the video for a minute. Um, I am supposed to work tomorrow at the school. Uh, I went ahead today and popped some heels in Isaiah's socks so that I can take those for my lunch break knitting. And also, uh, the person that I am subbing for tomorrow walks with the kids in the morning and uh, it's like 30 minutes of just like walking in circles in the gym. So I think that I'm going to like try to take these socks and just put them over my wrist and knit because I don't have to look at them they don't have ribbing anything um, and I'm hoping that I can get away with that if not I'll just put them down but I also feel like when I said hey you know I'm interested in being a, a sub para that it would have been nice if they would have been like hey sometimes we're gonna require you to exercise because then I would have like rethought it seriously I don't like to exercise. Um, but anyways, so these are the what I'm gonna be working on, um, and I'll probably make them at least as long as his foot, and then start the rib. So I popped those in today, and I wound up another skein of my um, Huntsman House of Autumn mode. It's kind of getting blown out by that light. I don't know that that's any better, but, and I did that so that I could finish up my second repeat on my sweater. So to the underarms is three and three quarters uh, repeats. So I'm officially over halfway there. Here's the back so you can actually see the yarn a little bit better. Nobody tell Allison that I'm almost halfway to my shoulders, though, or to my armpits, though, because I don't want her to... I want to beat her. Uh, so there's that, and um, Isaac went in for therapy, uh, his speech therapy, at the preschool today, and I tried to take a video of him, like, running into the 
into the school because normally he's like all going, I'm going to school. And today he would not like stop walking right next to me. So the video was like the top of his head in a coat. And so it didn't really turn out. Uh, this morning I got out my handy dandy Christmas list and I wasn't making it, but I was definitely checking it twice and trying to figure out where we are. And I'm really mad at Amazon because several of the things that weren't cheaper at Black Friday, so we haven't bought them yet, have gone up significantly in price since then. And it really annoys me. So that's what I did most of my morning. It takes quite a bit to organize a Christmas list for five kids and then send different things to grandparents and also like keep stuff for myself so that there's no like duplicates. That's confusing, but I think I got it handled. Uh, I did have some happy mail today and I'm hoping this will show up well because it's very beautiful. On Black Friday, I ordered from Lolo Did It and I got her Helping Hippos, which is her colorway that uh, she's, like the proceeds from it are going to help hurricane victims I think it's just hurricanes, I can't remember, but it's like a charitable one that she did. So it is all kinds of lovely neon prettiness. I'm so excited for this. This is on her original, low original, I guess I should say, and it's 85 extra fine superwash merino and 15 nylon. So I think some lovely sockies for me will be in coming for that and yesterday when I sat up my shot for opening my advent calendar from Lofty Loops I had not opened it when I set it up to do it in front of the poinsettia and then it was like it matched my poinsettia but then this morning I didn't even realize that I did it in the same spot but I wasn't really getting the poinsettia in it but the bottom of the poinsettia is like gold so this is kind of like my poinsettia one only I guess the points that I would be on top but I'm halfway through the first square I also realized at 4 30 this morning that I think there's 20 um, minis in the advent calendar so I don't I don't know what I'm gonna use to round out my three squares but I'm really liking just the different the different stuff and discovering what it's like each day. Uh, let's see, what else did I do today? So, I think that's most of the knitting. Last night I went to town on my Christmas sock, so I had just put in the heel, I think, or something. Maybe I was a little bit past the heel. But I got up to the point where I want to start increasing because this skein is 120 or 150 grams. And the socks that I'm wearing today, can you see them? Oop, my heel's down and tacky. These were 50 gram skeins of Felici and they are pretty much knee socks. And so I'm hoping that, I mean, so that would only be 100 grams. This is 150, so I'm hoping that I can turn this into Christmas knee-high socks. I did not split the ball when I first started it because uh, I intended to work on them when I was on my VKL trip. And so I'm just like weighing it every once in a while. And so far I've only used about 50. And I'm to the point that I want to start increasing. And I'm using the fluorite pattern from Andrea Mowry as kind of a guide of where to start um, increasing, though I tried them on my leg and ended up going longer than she had suggested. But you're increasing, and like most increases in socks, you're increasing on one on each side or whatever. But as I got to this point where I'm ready to start increasing, I realized that I'm doing the whole thing in a rib so it will fit me pretty well. I don't know if you can even really see that rib, but I'm doing a three by one. And so I'm not really sure how to handle the increases in the rib. If I should just have some parts that 
some you know rib sections that have four for a while and then when it gets up far enough that I can throw another rib in there just do that I don't know what to do um, but it is getting decently long where I'm pretty much to the toe where I would be thinking about ending a sock if I was doing it that length but I want to use this whole skein and make awesome socks that will stick way out of my boots um, for the most part, that's a lot of what I've done today. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I did finally get out of the house for the first time since Friday, so that was kind of nice. It did snow a little bit more. Um, when we used to live in Dubuque, Iowa, it would snow almost every day, and it would be like one or two inches all the time. And it's not accumulating like that here. It's just... Snow is beautiful, and I love snow. But like four days straight of it is odd for here. In Dubuque it was normal, but here not so much. I don't know. Um, I was going to talk about something else, but I've decided not to. Uh, but I was going to talk a little bit about uh, the food pantry at our church. Um, about three years ago, well, about a month after we moved here, my husband was made like the head of the ministerial association in town because he was the most senior pastor. There's three churches in our town, um, Missouri Synod Lutheran, Catholic, and um, Presbyterian. And the Lutheran minister had left right before we came, and then a month after um, we got here, that priest, the priest um, retired. And whoever has been here the longest is the, the like, in charge of the ministerial fund. And Mike often would get calls, you know, with people that uh, needed help with bills or things like that. And so when he would help them with that, he would always ask them, like, do you have food? And sometimes they would not. And so um, sometimes we would have like a little donation that was supposed to be going into Fremont, which is 20 miles away. Um, and he would give them food out of that or give them more money to get food or whatever. And also at that same time, um, the dentist in town was having a can drive and I don't know, I think she was like giving a certain amount off of your dental cleaning if you brought in canned goods or something, but she wanted to donate it locally and there wasn't really anywhere to go. I feel like my boobs are like super hanging out. They're really not, but whatever. Um, and so, like, she reached out. She's like, what's the deal? Where could I do this? And that's when we very seriously started talking about how we needed to start something here. Uh, we cleared off part of our stage, which isn't really used. It was just being used as storage. And it actually took until May. But, um, so two and a half years ago, we opened a food pantry. It is completely supported by donations um, from the community. Uh, when we first started, we had no rules. Since then, we've had to put in a few rules. Um, pretty much anybody can, from the school district um, area, and, like they don't have to have kids in the school district, but people who live in our school district can come in and basically shop for what their family needs and what they want. There's some limits on, you know, a couple of things like uh, meats. Um, so that we just have enough to go around because those more expensive things you obviously don't have as endless of a supply as say canned corn or canned green beans but it's been an amazing ministry and the thousands upon thousands of meals that it has provided there's no federal money um, the church itself doesn't pay for the pantry food uh, people bring in donations, people donate money um, that we sometimes then go and buy a whole bunch of meat or uh, we had to buy a refrigerator. Um, people donated a freezer. You know, it's just been an amazing thing to see. In the beginning, it took a while to educate people kind of about rural poverty and how that's different than if you're in a more urban setting or in a city. And a lot of people didn't understand that why they couldn't just go to Fremont and get stuff. Well, you know, we would tell them. 
if you don't have the money for the food, you don't have the money to drive 20 miles there and 20 miles back to go get it. On top of which, um, all of the ones we know of in town have a lot of restrictions. You don't always get to pick your own food. Um, we've had some women come in with broken jaws and black eyes and broken arms that would not have been able to prove their income because of the situation that they were leaving. Um, it has been an amazing thing to see. But anyways, the reason why I am saying all this stuff, blah, 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 um, is because today I went over to open up the pantry because high school kids, um, there were multiple um, clubs from the high school, sports teams, the student council contributed money that they had fundraised for through this past year and the student council took that money and went to Hy-Vee and Hy-Vee cut them deals on food and other things and the student council brought it and brought it in. So I just wanted to share with you what a difference some high school students can make and it's not just them but every single one of us can make a huge difference thousands of meals have been provided because people once they figured out that it really was needed and they want to help they want to help the people around them and I feel like we're kind of in a time where a lot of people feel fearful and hate it, hateful towards each other for various reasons, you know, political, religious, all kinds of things. Um, and to be able to see a community provide for two and a half years, we have never had no money in our account. We've never had um, no food on our shelves. And it is completely, 100%, this community stepping up to take care of those around them. So anyways, I wanted to share with you what the high schoolers at this, I mean, our town has 1,200 people in it. So our high school is not big. Our school system is not big. We have one elementary and the middle school and the high school are in the same building. Not a big thing. Not a big school. But today... They brought in seven boxes of diapers. Sorry. <laughs> 14 jugs of laundry detergent. 36 bottles of cooking oil. 96 cans of chili beans. 24 cans of pumpkin. 58 bags of sugar. 36 bags of crackers. 48 five pound bags of flour. 36 hams and 120 pounds of hamburger. A bunch of high school kids did that. So, make a difference, love your neighbor, and I will see you tomorrow. I have no idea though, when though because I'm working and uh, right after I get this put together, I'm gonna go take some NyQuil, but um, keep warm and I will see you tomorrow.